Okay, hallelujah, praise God, Jesus is the Lord, and I want to talk to you about the mark of the beast. Okay, and I'm going to use, first of all, I've already talked about this a lot, Revelation chapter 14, the timeline, the gospel goes out, and then Babylon the Great Falls, then the mark of the beast comes out. Then there's great persecution. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the, those who remain faithful to the Lord, Jesus. And then after that, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then after that, the harvest of the earth. In other words, the rapture. In other words, there is no rapture that takes us out before the mark of the beast. Okay. Now, people who talk about the rapture talk about the Apostle Paul's writing in 1 Thessalonians. Okay, where he said, where Paul says, "We who are alive and remain will be captured, will be raptured up to meet with him in the air." I'm sorry, but if you look at those two words, "alive and remain," that goes right back to what the Bible says about the great falling away and the persecution, and those being put to death for their faith. So apparently, just before the harvest of the earth, or the rapture, as Paul is discussing it in in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, he says, we who are alive and remain. And the Bible says this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. And then it says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, meaning there's going to be a bunch put to death. And Paul says, we who are alive, one, and remain. So trying to use 1 Thessalonians 4.13 as, yeah, it, discuss, it is the rapture that he's talking about. It's the harvest of the earth, but it happens after the mark of the beast comes out. Now let's talk about what Paul now here now we're going to get down to what Paul says later in 2 Thessalonians. All right? So how about we we stop playing around and we go to first he says in 1 Thessalonians that we who are alive and remain Okay? Think about that for a minute. Those are the ones who will be captured up. In other words, after the great falling away after many have been put to death for their faith, we who are alive and remain. In other words, the mark of the beast comes out. There's great persecution, even unto death. Brother will be pr betray brother unto death. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with him in the air. And that goes exactly, that fits right in with the timeline of Revelation chapter 14 where the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Then after that, Babylon the Great falls. Then after that, the mark of the beast comes out. And if you look at it from a real perspective, after the mark of the beast comes out, this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful, remain faithful to Jesus. And then blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. That's Revelation 14, 13. And then Revelation 14, 14, we see the, har the rapture, the harvest of the earth. Anybody who tells you that the harvest of the earth and the rapture happens before the mark of the beast comes out is lying and they're, not, they're preparing you to be unprepared for anything. In other words, they're saying, see that hurricane that looks like it's coming directly for us? It's not coming. When that hurricane hits, are you going to be a little bit irritated with the person who told you, don't worry about that hurricane? If you're crossing the street and you look over and you see a big Mack truck heading your way and somebody says, don't worry, just walk in front of it, no big deal. It's going to stop. Aren't you going to be a little bit irritated when you end up under the truck? That's what they're doing. They're throwing you under the bus when they teach you that you don't have to worry about the mark of the beast because we're going to be raptured up. And then they use they use Paul's writing in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, convolute it, where it's very clear. Paul says, we who are alive and remain. 
I'm just saying. But let's see what Paul says later in 2 Thessalonians. So I'm looking at 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. It says, now this is important, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin revealed. That's pretty clear that the falling away, listen, let me explain how it works. When the mark of the beast comes out, there will be a great falling away. The Bible says this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. When the mark of the beast comes out, there will be a great falling away. And guess what else the mark of the beast is going to do? When the mark of the beast comes out, you will know for sure, for sure, beyond the shadow of a doubt, who the man of sin is, who the Antichrist is. And that's kind of important because when I was in college... And I have been saved for a few years, and I never even heard of the end of the world. I didn't even know anything about the book of Revelation. And I became a Christian. God revealed himself to me, and I was serving God. And then somebody, some other Christian in, in my dorm was talking about the end of the world and the book of Revelation. I'd never even heard of that. And I was amazed. I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, the mark of the beast, 666. I was like, huh? I've never heard of that. I never. I was completely clueless about that stuff. Well, that was in like 1992. Okay, so now I've read my Bible many times and, you know, I'm up to speed on some of that stuff. But the point is, back then, I found a pamphlet that somebody was handing out on campus saying that Pope John Paul, I think it was John Paul II or one of those popes, Whoever was the Pope in 1992, they were saying that he is the Antichrist and that he's going to force everybody to have a... Well, he died. He's no longer the Pope. He's not on the scene. He's gone. The point is, every couple of years, I see somebody proclaiming that this guy's the Antichrist or that guy's the Antichrist. So when I hear people saying this particular person, some people say, oh, the Ob Obama's the Antichrist. Honestly, I don't know. The Lord never told me that. And frankly, there's been so many people that have proclaimed one person or another to be the, the Antichrist, the Revelation chapter 13 Antichrist. There's no way to know for 100% sure until the mark of the beast comes out. Then you'll say, that, that is the Antichrist. So that's why the Bible says that there first be a, a great falling away, and second, that man will be revealed by the fact. There's two facts. One, he makes a seven-year peace agreement with Israel. That has not happened yet. I thought it was going to be this Iran nuclear deal, but the more things play out, that's a nuclear deal. That's a worldwide nuclear deal. They're not even really talking to Israel. As a matter of fact, they've intentionally excluded Israel from that. And I thought, you know what, when this nuclear deal comes out, if it's a seven-year deal, oh boy, that's got to be it. It's not, because they're not even negotiating. They're not even talking to Israel. This is a negotiated deal with Iran. There's nothing about that in the Bible. In other words, there's a seven-year deal to come, and when the mark of the beast comes out, those two things are going to happen at the same time. That's what the Lord's been showing me. The mark of the beast is going to first come out at about the same time that there's a seven-year peace deal with Israel at about the same time that the 144,000 have an encounter with God and they're sealed with that mark on their forehead. Now, most of you won't be able to confirm or verify that last part unless you are one of the 144,000, in which case you'll say, yeah, I remember the day I had a dream and I was asleep and I saw a vision. I came out of my body. Jesus showed up in my room and stamped me on the forehead. And now my head burns. Or whatever. They're going to have some sort of testimony about the day. There's 144,000 guys out there who are going to have a testimony on the day they remember. Now, it hasn't happened yet. 
Because when the Mark of the Beast comes out, that's when that 144,000 is also going to be sealed with, with the mark on their forehead. So what I'm getting to here, and this is important, this is God's word. This is what it says. Okay, and listen, I am so sick and tired of seeing people do witchcraft with what the Holy Bible says. Okay, and when I say witchcraft, I mean full on, full on witchcrafting the scriptures. Okay, here's what it says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except for there be a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. How are you going to explain to me that and say that the rapture happens before that? It says it very clearly. That will. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying. The mark of the beast is going to come out. There's going to be a great falling away. And all those lukewarm Christians who are messing up the church and who are messing up Christianity and who are teaching lies, they're all going to fall away. And guess what? Guess what? In the midst of the mark of the beast, there's going to be great persecution. But guess what? There is going to be miracles, signs and wonders, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, revival. And there's going to be so much power from God that there's going to be many Christians, when the mark of the beast comes out, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. Eventually, you're going to be on a wanted list Eventually, it's going to be in the news. If you see anybody who doesn't have the mark on their right hand, call the authorities right away and turn them in. The day is coming when there's going to be a whole family, two or three families of Christians living in a barn out in the back of somebody's property, hiding out and living off the land somehow, hoping that they don't get caught. And during those days, there's going to be revival. There's going to be supernatural provision. God will sustain these people until, until the word comes forth. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then all those people who are hiding out, all those people who are remain faithful to Jesus, have not taken the mark of the beast, and are living in a place of miracles and signs and wonders just to survive, on the day that the Holy Spirit speaks prophetically to that group, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. There's going to be a number of them. Let's say you got a, you got two families, like like 15 people, two moms and dads, a dozen or so kids, and they're all living up there seeking God, worshiping God, and when it comes time to get food, they need a miracle every single day. And God sustains them miraculously. Nobody even knows they're up there. And all they do is pray and seek God. And they're having patient endurance. And then one day they're in their prayer time. The whole group of them. And suddenly someone prophesies. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And out of that group of say 15 people. Five of them say you know what. It's time for me to just lay it down. And the rest of them say, well, this means, the, the, this means the harvest of the earth is imminent. The day and the hour no one knows, but before the harvest of the earth, there will be a prophecy that comes forth in the midst of the mark of the beast. The prophecy will come forth to those who remain faithful to Jesus and have not received the mark of the beast. And that prophecy will be... <clears throat> Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. When you hear that prophecy coming forth, first of all, Babylon the Great has fallen. First of all, before that, the gospel has gone out. Babylon the Great has fallen. The mark of the beast has come out. There has been a great falling away. The man of sin is revealed. Okay, that all happens. Then, patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus, then when you hear the prophecy, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, then you know 
that there's a number of saints to be put to death for their faith, and once that number is complete, the harvest of the earth will happen. The day and the hour, no one knows. Okay? But that is the sequence of events that happens before the harvest of the earth or the rapture. I hate to be redundant, but I'm going to go over it again. One, the gospel goes to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Revelation 14, 6. After that, the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. That's a nuclear attack. That's America the Great falls. The government to reestablish itself after America has been destroyed will be the one world government. It will be the government of the Antichrist. And after Babylon the Great falls... It's not long after that the mark of the beast comes out. When the mark of the beast comes out, there will be a great falling away. The man of sin will be revealed. You'll know who the Antichrist is when the mark of the beast comes out. And then there will be great persecution, like Jesus said in Matthew 24, as never was before and never will be ever again. Many will be put to death for their faith. Brother will be Trey, brother, unto death. Okay? Then after that, after patient endurance, after the mark of the beast, the Lord says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. When you hear that, there might be somebody watching that you know in your heart, God told you a long time ago, that you're to be a martyr for the Lord. You hold out and you remain faithful to Jesus when that mark of the beast comes out. And on the day you hear that prophecy, you quickly turn yourself in. Now you might be with a group of a dozen people, and out of all those dozen people, you and one other person are called to lay it down. The rest of them are going to stay hidden until that number is complete, and then the harvest is going to happen. The day and the hour, no one knows when that harvest of the earth is going to happen, but I'm telling you these things have to happen before because the Bible makes it very clear in Revelation chapter 14. And don't witchcraft the scriptures on me. Don't say, well, listen, if there's going to be a harvest of the earth, another rapture, it's got to happen in Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 or 8. And it's not there because by verse 9, the mark of the beast comes out. I'm just saying, if there's a if there's a, a pre-rapture to the rapture, it has to happen in Revelation chapter 14. It could only happen... I'm going to go there. I've already gone over this, and I hate to be redundant, but in Revelation chapter 14, you need to get your Bible out and study this out. There's a clear timeline starting in 14 verse 6. Now, let me just say this. If the seven seals are a clear timeline, okay, the first seal, second seal, third seal, and then at the seventh seal, what's the seventh seal? It begins the seven trumpets, which is also a clear timeline. Okay, and then the, then the bowls of God's wrath, which is also a clear timeline. Anybody who tells you that the, that the third seal happens, and then the second seal, and then the fifth seal, and then the first seal, that's a lie from the devil! Come on, man. God is not stupid. The whole point of God being accurate is that he is God and he has predicted the future from times past and everything's going to happen exactly in sequence as he says it. And so those are timelines that are clearly found. And in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, we see the beginning of another timeline where the gospel is preached to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And then in verse 7, it says, Fear God and give Him glory. And then, for the hour of His judgment has come. And then verse 8, it says, Babylon the Great Falls. And then by verse 9, the mark of the beast comes out. There is no harvest of the earth or rapture here. In other words, from the time that the gospel is reaches every nation, language, tribe, and people, to the time where... The mark of the beast comes out. There's verse 7 and 8. So there should be verse 
it would have said, then the rapture happens, there's a quickening, and many are taken away. Or in verse 6.5, just between verse 6 and 7 in Revelation 14, there should be a scripture that says, now that the gospel has reached every nation, language, tribe, and people, there will be a quickening and a gathering away as Elijah was raptured up, you know, on the day of his taking of his catching away. It would say that right there, but it doesn't. And God's not playing games. God's not trying to throw a bunch of... There's a guy on YouTube... And I'm going to put a link to his video. And the video is entitled, There is no apostasy or falling away. And I'm going to put a link in the description. You go ahead and watch this guy's video. And you'll see how he doesn't like what the Bible says. That's basically what it comes down to. And he goes over... 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And he does some serious witchcraft on what the Bible says. So I want you to go ahead. If you want to see how witchcraft works on what the Bible says, watch this guy. Because he clearly says, well, I don't like the idea of having to go through trials and having to have patient endurance. It just doesn't comfort me. And so what I did is I found a, some Bible scholar from 100 years ago who teaches that what the Bible says is not what the Bible says. And he talks about how the great apostasy actually means a big circle with a line through it or some crazy thing, very similar to what Perry Stone talks about when when Perry Stone talks about the rapture, he talks about the wheat harvest, the barley harvest, and the grape harvest, and he goes through all these scriptures, all this crazy smoke and mirrors and hat tricks and pulling a rabbit out of a hat and throwing all the scriptures into a giant witch's brew cauldron, mixing them up and coming up with some witchcrafted false teaching. I'm just saying. And the end conclusion is, we don't like the idea that when the mark of the beast comes out, there's going to be a great falling away, and we want to be raptured up before that happens. Why? Because they know in their heart that they have not lived for God the way they should, and when persecution really arises, just like the Bible says, they quickly fall away. So I'm just telling you, this guy who has this video called There Is No Apostasy or Falling Away, he's the type of guy who when the mark of the beast comes out, he will fall away because he has no root and he knows it in his heart. And for whatever reason, instead of accepting God's word and being earnest and getting his heart right with God, and obeying God and living for the Lord, in his heart he knows he hasn't done that. So he's terrified of the coming persecution from Matthew chapter 24, also described in Revelation chapter 14, where it says this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. And after that it says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And I'm sorry to call this guy out, but he's a perfect example. If you watch his video, you'll see how he read the Bible. He didn't like what it said. He didn't feel comfortable with it. And so instead of accepting God's word and saying, okay, God, the Bible says they will no longer be willing to endure sound teaching, but wanting their ear, ears tickled, they turn away to follow fables and fantasies. Just saying, that's what the Bible says. They want their ears tickled, so they're going to gather unto themselves. Preachers are going to teach what their itching little ears want to want to hear. And this is exactly what this guy did in his video. He didn't like what the Bible says, so he, he spent all this time to find a Bible scholar from 100 years ago who teaches exactly what he wants to hear. And I'm sorry, but 
you may be able to witchcraft that scripture um, of, ver of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. You might be able to witchcraft that, but you cannot witchcraft Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6. Same with Perry Stone. You cannot put that in your cauldron of witch's brew and throw in a, a pig's ear and wheat and barley and grapes and mix up f f some scriptures and come up with a witch's brew of a false teaching when it comes to Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6. It's a very clear timeline that goes all the way through chapter 16. Why am I making this video? Because you need to prepare, be prepared and have your heart right with God because Babylon the Great's going to fall and after that the mark of the beast is going to come out and you need to have your heart right with God. You need to not be a foolish virgin. You need to have your lamp trimmed and burning and ready for the bridegroom to come and have oil in your vessel and not just a little but a lot of oil in your vessel. A lot. So that when persecution comes, that power rises up in you and you say, I will not take the mark of the beast. You will have to kill me, but my Lord is God and Jesus is my Savior and there is none other than him, the King of Kings. And, and while they're sitting there trying to put the mark of the beast on you and they got a gun on you, or, they, or you just saw them put to death someone who wouldn't bow to them, and you just, and then on one side you see somebody say, okay, I'll take it, go ahead, put it on. And you see people that were in your cell just cave in and take the mark of the beast. And then you see another person who won't take it and they put them to death. And now you're up. Now you're up. And just like Paul, I'm sorry, just like Peter, when Peter said, certainly I will never deny you, Lord. And he had a sword on his belt. That's what Peter was saying. He's like, see this sword? I'll never deny you. But the minute they came to get Jesus, Peter thought he's going to fight his way out of there. But it was Jesus who disarmed Peter. And all of a sudden, he didn't have his sword. And all of a sudden, a little 12-year-old girl points him out. You were with him, weren't you? I don't know, man. And so even Peter caved. And so if you think you're going to stand firm on something... You don't know until you're actually in the situation. Until you actually have an Islamic Muslim militant standing there with an AK-47 and he just gunned down your, your best buddy in the Lord for not receiving the mark of the beast and not bowing down to Allah. And then you just saw another person on your other side say, Okay, I, I confess. And, and, and fall away. I'll take the mark of the beast. Meanwhile, now that now it's your turn. Are you going to be like, okay, go ahead, put it on. Or are you going to be like the Bible says, they love not their life so much as to shrink from death. And when they, when they point that gun at you, you look right at them and you grab the muzzle of that gun. You put it right on your forehead and you say, I believe that Jesus is the Lord. He is my Savior and my King. I serve God and I serve God only. My Lord Jesus, my Lord Jesus, my Lord Jesus. And I tell you right now, Jesus is the Lord. And what is that when that happens? That's the oil the extra oil in your vessel rising up and burning. Do you know what you're going to do on that day? I can tell you the Bible says that many will fall away. And the Bible says that when persecution arises as because of the word, they quickly fall away. And I can tell you that these teachers who are teaching that the rapture happens before that, one, they're denying what the Bible says. Even the scriptures they use to prove that the rapture happens first are the same scriptures that I use to prove that that's all pointing to the same exact... In other words, they, they witchcraft the scriptures and try to twist them to say what they want it to say 
And I take those same scriptures and point them right back to what the Bible says. We who are alive and remain, which means many are not alive and have been put to death, and many no longer remain. In other words, remain faithful to Jesus. That's what that's talking about when he says, we who are alive and remain. So the same scripture that they use to say that the rapture happens before. How about Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 where it says, it says they endured patiently. And some use that scripture to say, or Revelation chapter 4 where they say the rapture happens then. I'm sorry, but there's no multitude in heaven. There's 24 elders, there's four living creatures, and then there's the angels of God. Sorry. And John even says, when he heard the word, come up here, he says, immediately he went up. So that happened way back when John was around. In other words, what they're saying is the rapture happened about the time when John wrote the book of Revelation, and the only people who were, who were raptured were John and the 24 elders. That's what they're saying when they say that in John chapter or, or in Revelation chapter four, starting in verse one, is where the rapture is. Uh, I'm sorry, but John says that happened immediately after back then. And I'm sorry, but the only people we see in heaven is 24 elders. So what you're saying is 24, 25 people got raptured up. That's your rapture waiting for. Guess what? You missed it. And I'll just tell you this. We see after we see after the harvest of the earth, God's barn full, and it says these are them that came out of the great tribulation. And it's a multitude. Multitude in heaven. So the point of this video is there will be a great revival when the mark of the beast comes out. Because all the lukewarm people will fall away, and those who are alive and remain faithful to Jesus... First of all, before the harvest of the earth, before the rapture, it's going to require miracles. It's going to require signs and wonders. It's going to require an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and prophecy and visions and revelation. You're going to have to have a vision and a revelation just to survive the day. You're going to have to wake up in the morning and pray and say, God, your will be done today. Show me what to do. And suddenly God give you a flash. Go down the street, go underneath the bridge, and you're going to find somebody left their sack lunch. A fisherman was out fishing, and he, whatever reason, walked away, and there's a brand new, nice, fresh Subway sandwich down there for you. And you're going to hear God's voice and be like, whoa, I haven't eaten in two days. That sounds good. And when you go down there, you'll be like, thank you, Jesus. Other people, they're not going to have any food. They won't be able to buy or sell anything. And they'll have one little box of raisins. And they'll pray over it. And everybody in the family will eat so much raisins. And God will make those raisins taste really good. And they'll all have a full tummy of raisins. You know, I'm just saying God's going to do miracles. Just like the days of Elijah, just like the days of Jesus. So when the mark of the beast comes out, it's going to be a glorious time for those Christians who remain faithful and love God. But for these guys who are teaching false teaching, and the reason they're teaching the false teaching is they know in their heart they have not lived the life. They do not have the history. They do not have that relationship with God. They're not, they're not right there. So they have to justify and try to change what the Bible says because they can't handle it. They know that they're going to be part of the number who quickly fall away. I hope this explains everything. Somebody sent me a message saying, no, no, it's not going to happen. There's going to be a big revival first. I'm here to tell you that there's going to be a big revival when the mark of the beast comes out too for those who remain faithful to the Lord and patient endurance. And on the day that the Lord says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Once the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith, then the rapture will happen. 